There's no doubt the big picture for corporate governance is around the economic cycles of boom and bust. We live in a complex interrelated world. The connections enable information to travel very quickly. This has meant there's been more pressure than ever before for organisations, whether it be mostly companies or governments or not-for-profit sector, to actually have good corporate governance. It's the one constant across all organisations. I've been researching and teaching corporate law and corporate governance for over 30 years. In that time, my experience has shown there are two completely fundamental factors that need to be taken into account. One is the legal systems. Each country has its own legal system. The most common ones are common law, civil code, and a mixed system, and often involving Islamic law. Those three systems interrelate, but have very different consequences in corporate governance. The other major factor is world markets, securities markets, the old stock exchanges. It doesn't matter if you're in London, New York, Sydney, or Shanghai. Each exchange has a different set of rules, different legal system, and impacts on global corporate governance. One of the complexities for governments, for boards of directors, employees and other stakeholders is the fact that international or global corporate governance is actually confusing. People often don't even agree with the basic definitions. To explain corporate governance, I've developed a theory known as the three pillars. The three pillars explains the interconnectedness within corporate governance. That is, there's corporate governance, there's due diligence, and then there's compliance programs. These three concepts are all interconnected. Each of them can be broken down into more detail, but for people to understand that corporate governance has three major elements is critical. Corporate governance is also broken down into two elements. They're similar, but different. So corporate social responsibility, or often just called CSR, is a great example of stakeholder theory. That is, the company should take into account the environment, its employees and other parties. But investors make up a big part of corporations and they've become really interested in what is now known as ESG or Environmental Social Governance. Both parties are similar but different and boards of directors in corporate governance need to understand both concepts really clearly. Corporate governance is also connected to the well-known concept of due diligence. Confusingly, there is actually two meanings to due diligence. One is the traditional external or transactional due diligence, where if you're buying a company or you're doing a takeover, you need to verify all the information to value the goodwill and lots of other factors, and that is known as due diligence. I'm particularly interested for corporate governance in internal due diligence. That is the systematic approach to find out the legal risks and the ways that you're going to deal with those risks. There is a six step plan to show due diligence. One of the big debates has been around global governance. What does it mean? We can trace it back in fact to the 13th century to the Swiss cantons. But it really started to come in vogue after the 1980s financial crashes and a series of royal commissions around the world in the 90s and early 2000s to try to focus on what is corporate governance. Over the last 30 years, there have been very clear economic cycles. There's been boom, there's been bust. Out of that, companies have raised their share price and their capital to come crashing down at a later stage. This has led to investigations, to raw commissions, to in fact, forensic analysis as to what went wrong. One of the things to come out is that good governance plays a major factor. The other is that directors have been asleep at the wheel. I've developed a simplified working definition to really help directors and students understand corporate governance. That is, doing the right thing and doing things right. Australia is interesting in that it uses a fuzzy law to explain certain principles. It's actually called the if not, why not principle. That simply means that you are meant to follow guidelines and regulations, but if there's a reason why you can't, you're legally allowed to explain why you've not done so. In direct contrast, the United States and the United Kingdom and many other countries have gone with black letter law. That is very detailed provisions, legislation this thick, which has to be worked through in detail. 
What we now know is there is no one right way in corporate governance. Scholars around the world have been asking two big questions. One is, what is the role of corporate governance? And two, what is its impact on the share price of an individual company? But it's even more complex because it's linked to corporate failures. It's linked to the way economies work. There is evidence that good corporate governance will slightly increase the share price. However, there are many other factors, economic cycles and product development, that will change that share price as well. However, there is international overwhelming evidence that good corporate governance produces sustainability. A company will be around a lot longer if they have good corporate governance. The primary responsibility for setting and implementing corporate governance is held by the board of directors. We all know that the board of directors, their talents and their skill set will have a major impact on good governance into the future. Please come and join me to discuss the complexities and intricacies of international corporate governance. I'm Professor Michael Adams.